Hey, we're the Fords, and this is By Grace We Live. Number six, we are so thankful that you guys are here hanging out with us again. Ryan, how was your week? It wasn't too bad. It went by pretty fast. I'm just kidding. That's what <laughs> I, I say every say time. Every week. It went by so fast. <laughs> yeah. Actually, uh, well, it was nice because we had Monday off. Yeah. For no the 4th worries. of July. Yeah. So that's always nice. Um, but I will say the latter half of the week dragged I a little bit for why. me. I know why we weren't here. Oh, that's Miles probably and it. I were gone. Yeah, which actually. we'll get into. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you think you had a high this week or a low this week? Obviously, your low is being away from us for two days. Of course, of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, what about a high? Uh, probably. Well, I was able to hang out with a couple friends. That was fun mm-hmm. this week. So always that's a good always time. good. Yeah. Yeah. You? My week was good. Thanks for asking. <laughs> you always forget to ask. I know. <laughs> um, you also, my week was good, but it was long and it was a little draining because I went up to Cleveland where my family lives and participated in a garage sale with my brother and his wife. And I was thankful that they allowed me to crash their garage sale. And obviously I had so much fun with them but we made the decision a week before the garage sale that we were gonna do it like that day so it was just a lot of planning on the front end to get to that point and that part was really exhausting and then also to like I was gone two full days so yeah. my I'm a I like rhythms mm-hmm. so my rhythm for the week was just like shot like I feel like I'm not going into Monday feeling rested and prepared like I normally do just because there's like a list in my mind of things I didn't do on Thursday and Friday when I was gone but mm-hmm. I'm trying to let that go and just keep rolling yeah. with the punches but um yeah it was good we were able to sell quite a bit of stuff yeah. So that was nice. Um, and I got to spend time with, like I said, my brother and my sister-in-law and my parents, too. I stayed at their house with Miles, and they were able to enjoy some quality time with him, which I know they loved, and he loved it, too. I mean, every day I came home, he, like, didn't give a rip that I was there. <laughs> I'd, like, walk in the door, and he'd just look at me and keep playing. So that was a good sign, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah. Well, Okay. Let's jump into our next segment of book club. Book I almost club. started talking about the topic for the uh, day, but I didn't want to forget book club. Well, I'll start by saying I have no new books that I'm reading, so I don't want to bore you guys with me saying once again, I'm still reading Dream Big. Yeah. Um, it is really good still. No complaints at all. I have such a long list of quotes that I've pulled from the book that aren't even necessarily related to like your dreams and your ambitions, but just life in general. Um, so yeah. So what are you reading for book club? Well, I did start a new book because I gave up on the one I was reading. Yeah. Yep. So I was reading everything sad is untrue. Um, wait, and also didn't you say that like you heard about this on a podcast and the guy on the podcast said this was like one of his favorite books or something? Yeah. I heard it from a few places. I, they may have both been podcasts, but which is why I picked it up because it was like they were raving about it. And then on Goodreads, it has like a 4.3 out of five stars overall rating. And so I was like, oh, surely this is going to be good. Right. Um, and it's got a great title. Everything sad is untrue. Yeah. Um, and it's like essentially a memoir of sorts. Um, but I just couldn't, I couldn't do it. I didn't, I did not like the writing style at all. Um, it was very like, so I described it this way where it was like, you're reading the opening narration to like a TV, like the wonder years or something like that. Or like, um, 
I don't know. There's the Goldbergs. The Goldbergs. I think. Yeah. You know, Pat it's like Oswalt his adult is, version. Yeah. Or the, a self. Christmas story. Yeah. You have Ralphie's adult self, like reading a narration over top of you watching them do something. Yeah. And that's what it felt like you're reading. The oh. problem is that is annoying to read. Yeah. And it would be very confusing. I feel like too. Yeah. And then on top of that, it was just very choppy, mm-hmm. like cutting back and forth between all these different um, stories and things and uh like uh cultural myths and legends and then into his own story and then half the time some of the details he's telling you about his own family story isn't actually necessarily true um but which i think was part of the point was that he doesn't really know um but it was just all over the place in the writing i did not like it all yeah you came in from the deck yesterday and you're like i'm done and i was like what yeah. and you're like i can't do this anymore <laughs> yeah i read like 130 pages and so i about halfway through yeah i i had spent like what 45 minutes to an hour on the Outside. deck reading that yeah and then you gave it a good try good effort and then i finally was like i'm i can't do this yeah because i looked and i was like i still have like 200 pages left I was going to try to power through it because I've heard great, like, it's... Maybe the turning hoping, point came yeah. on, like, 137 well, pages. Well, probably not. <laughs> but it, I don't know. I just couldn't, I couldn't hang. And Daniel always says, you know, life's too short f- to read a bad book. That's so, true. Daniel's our friend. Yeah. And our pastor. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so I finally was like, I just can't do this. I'm yeah. not that interested. Like, there's a good story in there. Mm-hmm. I just was, it was like everything else was too much. Keeping you from Keeping it. me from enjoying it. Yeah, that's a bummer. And, well, and then, so I, I, I like to go on Goodreads and look and see like, okay, what do people like about this? Because I'm, I'm clearly missing something because there are people raving about it. Right. Um, but what I realized was a lot of the top reviews were saying that they listened to the audiobook. Oh. Which then would be like listening yeah. to an opening yeah. narration to a TV show yeah. or a movie. That makes a lot of sense. And so I thought, yeah, that makes total sense. This is But still, awful even to then, read. I feel like choppiness is hard to listen to as yeah. well. Yeah. So, but it, it, I think it's probably better if it, if listened to, yeah, is my guess. Because that's mm-hmm. literally the comparison I made mm-hmm. before. So, um, so now I decided to go and I started. The Lord of the Rings, mm-hmm. Fellowship of the Ring. So, because that's like a big hole in my literary journey is the Lord of... <laughs> I've read The Hobbit, uh, yeah, um, but I've never read the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Especially because you like those genres. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love fantasy and mm-hmm. like stuff like Harry that. Harry Potter, check. Yeah. Chronicles, Chronicles of Narnia, check. The Hobbit, check. Check. And now yep. we just need Lord of the Rings. Yeah, so that's just like a huge... Um, huge hole hunger so. games no check uh i've never read them i mean i've seen the movies yeah that's I, mean, not I guess the same. i've seen lord of the rings movies too but yeah um i, I mean all yeah. books are better usually i'm not as like i mean i think the problem is like with lord of the rings it's like a genre defining series it is, you know for sure it's like a huge uh huge staple and so to have that not now do you see yourself red as list, an elf or uh, uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm definitely a hobbit. I had friends in college who would be like, oh, you're definitely an elf. You're definitely a hobbit or whatever. And I was like, I don't know what's happening right I'm for, now. I think I would fit most probably you're a hobbit. with hobbits. Yeah. I don't know what that means, but uh, that's okay. what does it mean? Th- like, uh, they're just very like keep to themselves, peaceful. <laughs> you know, they, um, they don't come out and talk to people. Yeah. Yeah. They're very kind of like they they tend to seem very introverted at least within their own culture Mm. like they they don't you know they're like let's stick to the shire and that's all we need yeah you know that is you for sure then so kind of like homebody yeah you know that's why there's only like (gasps) you're my hubby who's a hobby okay (laughs) (laughs) i just scared our dog (laughs) Uh, anyway sorry not to make things weird but here we are. <laughs> yep. So anyways, I'm looking forward to that. I've only read like 20 to 30 pages of that, so I'm not super far yet. Um, but I expect to thoroughly enjoy this one as opposed to the last book. 
Yeah, you'll probably complete the series. How many books are there? Three. Three. Yeah, the by the end of the summer. Yeah, that was my probably goal. I told myself uh, like a couple weeks ago, that is going to be a series I finish before the end of the summer. Mm-hmm. It's Lord of the Rings. And so yep, here we are. Here we are. You're doing it. I'm doing it. Good job. Thanks. You had a pet on the back for the day. Well, now it's time to jump into this week's topic. Yep. Um, and this kind of is inspired by the fact that we just had a garage sale, but it's also something that's sort of been stirring up inside of me for, I would say, even like over the last year or so. And you, I, I, I'll premise the episode by saying this is going to be very heavy on me talking because like you're not necessarily feeling exactly the same way that I'm feeling, Mm -hmm. but you don't necessarily disagree with me either, but it's just something that's been very prominent in my mind and like kind of things that I've been trying to live out. Um, And that's the idea that less is enough. (laughs) Hmm. Um, So we had a garage sale Ryan likes to collect Funkos, which are like little collectible figures. I I mean, you like to collect more than that, too, but those are like a big thing. And so we had boxes and boxes in our basement of Funkos that he no longer wanted. Um, And this is actually the second time we've sold Funkos Mm -hmm. like from the basement. This was more than last time. Yeah, there was way more than this time. But like. That is primarily what we sold at the garage sale. Like people came and bought some of my things, but mostly we walked away with a hefty profit from the Funkos. Mm-hmm. And um, and I also should premise with saying, like, I am not sharing my thoughts and feelings to make anyone who's listening feel guilty or like there is something wrong. Except for me. No, no, no. I'm not even kidding. you. Like I don't <laughs> feel like there is nothing wrong with having hobbies and things that you enjoy and mm. like you enjoy collecting these and that is fine. And there are things that I enjoy doing. But I think sometimes what we have to be aware of and gonna just do a heart check on is that our culture is always telling us we always need more and like we have to keep up with the Joneses or like we have to have X, Y, and Z to be happy or whatever. And that is just, it's not true. And it's also, I feel like very counter cultural to like what we find in scripture. Um, and it, it's just something that I have been reflecting on on my own like in my own journey um but when you have a garage sale it kind of makes you be aware of like okay why do we have all this junk like there's literally so much stuff sitting in our basement that we don't ever use we don't ever think about it's always kind of been the catch-all place for things that like oh we used to use this we don't anymore let's just put it in the basement and I don't want to live like that anymore like now I I want to be a minimalist I think like I want if we're not going to use it get rid of it like don't try to save it. So if, if you think you're going to use it like a couple years down the road for whatever event or something like that, no, just get rid of it. Um, try to sell it, donate it, get it out of your house if you're not going to use it and it's not purposeful and you don't enjoy it. Um, so these ideas kind of started last week when I was going through a basement. But truthfully, there are two key moments where in the last year, I feel like God has been stirring this up inside of me and kind of making me, it's like sort of awakening me to this in my own life. And the first one was last fall, I um, was really excited to decorate our house for the fall because I didn't do it the year prior. I was pregnant with Miles. I was due with Miles in the fall. And I was like, the last thing I want to do right now is take out a bunch of decorations and put them up (laughs) and then have to put them away after the baby is here. I didn't even want to decorate for Christmas that year, which Mm -hmm. was so sad to you because that's like your favorite time of the year. Yeah. But I was just like so exhausted. I didn't care. So when this year came around, I was super excited to do it. I went out to Hobby Lobby and I bought more decorations for the fall because we just had different like pieces of furniture that could be decorated that we didn't the year before. Whatever. Got home, put up my little display and I stood back and I looked at it and I was like, huh. This didn't bring me like any joy. Like 
I thought I would look back. I mean, don't get me wrong. I thought it was cute. Like, mm-hmm. oh, wow, this is really adorable. But I remember feeling like this isn't how I thought I would feel after putting up all these adorable decorations. Um, and I... I just sat back and thought, I just wasted a ton of money. Like, I just wasted a ton of money. And then when I told you, you how much money I wasted, <laughs> you weren't thrilled. Um, and I didn't know how to put it into words at the time. I remember, actually, I was talking to my sister-in-law, Sarah May, and I was like, I don't know what I'm trying to tell you. I just, I am like, I didn't feel joy in that moment. And I'm trying to figure out why. And I think it was because, like, Maybe this is just something I experience, but I go on Pinterest or I go on Instagram and I see these like picture perfect homes and I see people sharing about like, oh, having like a put together home and it's like your own style and whatever. And it's like, this is, this makes me feel like so amazing. makes me come alive or whatever. I wasn't feeling that. And I was like, what is wrong with me? And I don't think there's anything wrong with me. And Mm -mm. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with like taking pride and, you know, taking care of your house and having like a style and sharing your personality through like your decorations and your furniture and whatever. Um, But in that moment, I just realized like this isn't doing it for me. Like I don't care about that that much and that's okay. Like I don't have to. Um, I think it just helped me realize like I shouldn't be looking to my like the culture that I live in to try to help me decide how I should be living my life what I should be spending my time and my money on um and honestly like if you look at our culture it gets way too excessive like every season maybe some people don't feel like this I felt like I had to do this because that's what everyone else was doing every season you needed new decorations for the season and then the next year you had to buy brand new ones because you don't want the ones that you had the year before like whatever that's not true. Like you don't have to do that Mm -hmm. and it's okay to not do that. I'm sure you're in full agreement with that because that means less money. (laughs) Um, but that was one instance. And then the second we, um, in the spring we did like a little book study with a few other couples from our church. It was called belonging and becoming, and I'll link it in the show notes. Um, but there is a chapter about, well so the whole the whole book is about creating like a thriving family culture and there was a chapter that really struck a chord with me and it was about is your family living in scarcity or out of abundance and this question was one of the questions that they posed was um what is the right kind of size or life for your family so um, thinking about your finances, how you spend your finances. Do you give generously? Do you hold tightly to things? Are you living out of abundance or are you living from a place of scarcity? And is the, like the decisions that you make or are the decisions you're making influencing that and whatever. And so that evening we just talked a lot about kind of like finances and a budget and like do you have financial goals or like how much do you want to give away and are you living from a place of generosity and stuff like that and um, I was very inspired by the two people who were kind of like leading that discussion like they are very um, intentional with their money and just how they spend their money and um, not that Ryan and I aren't like we're not putting ourselves in debt by excessively spending or anything. But I feel like we've never like had a whole lot of intentionality behind, okay, this is what we make and this is what we spend. And like, do we need this or don't we need this? Like we've always just kind of both been very like loose with, um, I want that and we can afford it. So I'm going to get that. Like, like to an extent, there's a healthy like balance that we have. For me, the area that I know I have been excessive in my spending, though, is with clothes and buying clothes. I love fashion. I like looking cute. Um, It's what I do for a living. And it's an area where I can be very excessive. Um, And so I had given myself this challenge in in May. So I've only been doing it for three months. But as a way to kind of 
build parameters for this, um, like not spending excessively, I gave myself a challenge to only shop secondhand for one full year. And I'm already, I'm like I said, only three months into it. But a few things that I have realized are, number one, I see like the little boutiques and the businesses on Instagram and Facebook that I used to buy from all the time. And I don't feel like I want to buy every time they drop a collection. And before I, anytime they dropped a collection, I was like, oh, I have to get something, even if I didn't need it. And it, even if I wasn't like totally in love with it. And there's a part of me that has come to realize that like I was I was seeking joy and satisfaction and new clothes because it made me feel better about myself, which might sound super vain, but it's just the reality of where I was at. Like I was looking to those things to find fulfillment, even though that fulfillment is completely fleeting because then the next week when they would have the collect a new collection, I felt like I needed to do it again so that I could find that same fulfillment. Um, And again, I'm not saying it's a bad thing to have things that you enjoy. For me personally, it is an area that I do think that I sort of kind of like idolized and looked to for satisfaction more than I was looking to find it in the Lord. Um, And I don't like to over spiritualize things like sometimes I think people can be very like cheesy when they talk about this kind of stuff, but it is truly how I was feeling and where I, where I am at. Um, and it made me think of the scripture in Matthew chapter six, uh, verse 19. It says, don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. Um, so yeah, again, I, I have just realized like I was caring way more about certain things in my life, like buying new clothes and looking cute and feeling stylish than I was caring about like things of heaven. Um, and so this little challenge has been really good for me in that regard. And it's also been really good for our bank account because I haven't actually gone out and shopped a whole lot, honestly. Like I'll go thrifting every now and then, but something that's really cool about thrifting is like, you have to really find the right piece to want to buy it because it's been used before. So it might have a little wear and tear. It might not be like the right size and fit you exactly, you know, or there are things where it's like, I'm looking for something specific. And if I don't find it, that's okay. I don't need to buy it. Um, so again, it's just like been a good kind of like heart check for me. Like, am I buying this because I need it? Or am I just buying it? Cause like I want it and I feel like I want to feel better about myself. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Basically what I, I feel like God's kind of prompting me is to live more intentionally with the things that I even desire, the things that I bring into our home and the things that I buy. But also I kind of want to set up like a system for myself of um, why am I buying this? Do I need this? Does this have a purpose? Um, will I be happy that I bought this like a year from now? That kind of thing. Um, because truly like our satisfaction can't be found in the things around us because that will fade like the clothes we buy the toys we enjoy um even like i don't know our cars our homes like those kind of things like i'm grateful that we have them but um i can't find like my security my safety my comfort and my satisfaction and the things that we have um and I do feel like God is like sort of stirring this up and prompting this inside of me for something even bigger than just these thoughts that I'm having I don't fully know what that's like um, or what that will look like um but I'm a big believer that like when he is kind of pruning back layers or working in areas of our lives there's a there's a big reason for it and um I'm excited to find out what that is, <laughs> but I don't know. What are your thoughts? Like, how do you feel like less is enough 
is, I mean, is that something that you've ever wrestled with or I don't know? Um, yeah, I mean, it's always something I think that comes to mind periodically through like seasons and stuff. Um, I'm different than you in a certain, like I have, I, I like to collect things. Yes. I have a weird collector's habit, I guess you could say. And uh, sometimes it, uh, I've noticed things that I do. Um, for instance, like if, if I read a book or see a movie or something that I really like, I really enjoy. So like, um, it could be anything, it, you know, it could be a book, a movie, a TV show or something. I then go out and I'll like try to consume any thing in relation to that. Mm-hmm. So like if, if I read a book that I loved, I'll go and see, you know, are there other books? In, is it a series? Are there, did they make any movies or shows or is there anything? And even too, if it's like an author, I'll, if I read a book and I really like it, I'll see you know, is there anything about this author? Did he, does he have a memoir or biography or something like that? Mm -hmm. And, um, so I will like seek out other, um, pieces of like, uh, that are related to the thing I like. Yeah. And so in that, that all it ties into as well as like, um, you know, with like, I might, want to collect like uh, oh i i love star trek so i bought the starship enterprise as a little uh like statue Statue on my desk on your desk yep okay we don't (laughs) need those kind of sassy comments but um but it's thing i've noticed though that there are certain things that like i love star trek and that's something i'm gonna love probably for the rest of my life um and uh there are certain things like that. I mean, it's like in, in all reality, I'm, I also know that like none of this matters Mm -hmm. in the grand scheme of things, but it's just, I enjoy it. It's a hobby of mine. And, um, but I noticed that I would do that for things that I really like. And then actually like a month later, it's like, I'm not too keen on that thing anymore, but I've already like bought a book on this thing or, Mm -hmm. uh, or a t-shirt or a you're t-shirt a big, you're a big t-shirt person yeah but i've significantly you've gotten better about that for sure shirts. i mean i think i've done better in a lot of areas um yeah with, as far as like um whether it's probably i mean t-shirts is a big one i i barely buy clothes i mean mm-hmm. i'll buy clothes usually if they're on sale i mean like t-shirts and, that are related to the things that you no, like. i know yeah. i know i know i'm just saying like i barely buy clothes in general and then yeah. the t-shirts well, you can't I just, because i i spend well, <laughs> too much on my clothes not but, anymore though yeah um but and so the same thing with anything else i may collect whether it be a funko or um like a comic mm-hmm. or something like that. I, I've, what I learned to do is I, I like, I put in p- kind of like you said, parameters of like, okay, I have to refine the things I like. Cause I can't just on a whim, yeah. you know, be like, Oh, I'm going to go. I want to get this thing because I really like this show or this movie or thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and when something you said made me think of why I, do some of this mm-hmm. and why I enjoy having like um something like a physical representation of something that I enjoy mm-hmm. and I think it's because you had mentioned about decorating um you had said it's you know some people that's how they like to express themselves mm-hmm. and I think I realized that might be why because I'm more reserved yeah. than most people and so like I keep a lot of things in yeah and um I wonder if part of me liking to have like this representation is because I don't want to necessarily overtly express it, you know? And so this thing, the t-shirt or whatever can be that representation of my, that my expression of something that I like. That makes sense. I don't know. It's something I thought about. Maybe that's overanalyzing it, but no, I mean, um, it makes a lot of sense, but yeah. So, but no, I, I've done the same thing where I put in parameters of like, okay, I'm only going to, you know, do this. I pretty much, 
Um, I mean, I haven't bought anything too crazy in a long time. I don't think. Yeah. Like I've really slowed down on yeah. some of my. It's helped having a child purchase. for sure. Well, that, and you're like, okay, we need to take care of our child. His needs need to come before our own. Yeah, and, and not that we were ever like. No, like I said before, it's not like you and I are like putting. We we're never not going into debt because yeah, of our purchases. Right, right. We never didn't have margin or anything. No, but it's just we could have more. We could have more. Yeah. And then with you know with miles and everything, it's always nice to have a little more, and then to also be able to be generous and giving like mm-hmm. jesus calls us to um it's hard to do that when you're you Always already spending on yourself you've already spent the money yeah and i think that's it for me like i think i've just come to realize why like i said do i really need these things probably not and if i'm not buying them then yes like it it allows us to have more space to be generous in more ways than we already are mm-hmm. and i think that would be super cool, like freeing up the ability to be more generous and give away to people mm-hmm. instead of just buying for ourselves. Which again, I kind of feel like that's something our culture tells us to do. Like, oh, you've earned this money. You worked so hard for it. Like you deserve to treat yourself. And I'm not saying you don't. I'm not saying it's bad to like enjoy the things that, that you enjoy. But it's Mm -hmm. also really good to like kind of like you said have margin and yeah recognize like okay when i die all this is staying here but what i'm able to do to help other people can have an impact on them that lasts forever and i just i think i don't know i just don't want to live like this anymore (laughs) like just not thinking more intentionally about that kind of stuff yeah i think it is something that's easy for us to just overlook or settle in because of our culture it's like we don't live in a culture that is um like relying on their daily bread no you know we have a fridge full of food and Mm -hmm. uh we don't we don't go to a grocery store every day just to buy that day's meal right. and things like that. So it's like, we don't see that micro like view of our day to day life. Mm-hmm. Usually, you know, we, we plan weeks, sometimes months ahead for things because, you know, we can, you know, we stock our fridge for the entire week and not to say that's bad or anything. It's just because of those things, because of those good things, we sometimes can overlook the fact of like, you know, what it means to, you know, focus on the small, what, just what you need, not necessarily all Mm -hmm. the extra. I don't know if that made sense, but yeah. Yeah. I'm tracking, I think. Uh Uh-oh. Maybe I didn't make sense. (laughs) Well, I think I get what you're saying. Like, we don't necessarily and i should like we because we are middle class yeah like it's you know there are people in our society and in our in america that don't have these luxuries even but right. like i just remember thinking of when you went to romania and your host every day mom, she had she to would, go get the food that she wanted for that night right yeah and so it's like when you when you're focusing on such a small point in time like yeah. you're not thinking about the week um, you can really focus on what you actually, what you actually need. need because you're thinking about that day. Yeah. Um, as opposed to like, I mean, how often do we have things go bad in our fridge all, or all because, because we're thinking on a larger scale yeah. of the entire week. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's easy not to, f- it's easy to settle because we miss like the daily need mm-hmm. because we just, um well we are able to because we're able we're to we're able to look past the daily need because we have the resources right, or whatever right. but then i think it doesn't it doesn't help us actually realize it, what we need right and that, off, well, that's what yeah, i mean that's what i mean yeah, yeah. then we just like buy stuff out of want or mm-hmm. for me truthfully like i'm saying like I would be like, oh, I need to have this new shirt. Mm -hmm. And then like the week later, I'd be like, I don't even like it that much. 
I need to have this new shirt. I don't even like it that much. Like <laughs> that is a pattern that I have found in myself and it's made me just kind of have this heart check of like, okay, I don't need all this stuff. Like this mm-hmm. is ridiculous that I've allowed this mentality to kind of shape like my purchases and my life. And so it's just been a wake up call of like, okay, I can realize what I do need and what I want are two different things. Mm -hmm. It's not bad to have wants, but when you, when you shape your language of like, Oh, I need that new video game or I need that new purse or whatever, like then you don't recognize maybe the excessiveness of your life Mm -hmm. and and then if you're not thinking about that then you miss the opportunities that you might have to to actually give to people who are in need and i think Mm -hmm. that's it for me like i just don't want to keep living like that i don't want to keep living in excess because i feel like when we do that we miss out on storing up our treasures in heaven which is like the biggest thing that's why we're here we're here to be the hands and feet of jesus and if all i'm focused on is what i can give for me to make me happy and to make me feel more comfortable and whatever i am missing out on how i can do that for others or how it can just be like jesus to those people by giving to them if they are in need or even just having the like awareness that someone might need a friend or whatever mm-hmm. i guess just not being so self-focused yeah because i think sometimes that's where like materialism stems from like i want to feel better or i want these things to make me look better or whatever and i don't know i feel like i'm rambling at this point yeah um i think you're right though i think it that when you're driven by your wants then you become super self-focused because it will never be fulfilled Whereas if if you're focused on just what you need, and and who ultimately can supply those needs, right? Um, those can be met. Yeah, your needs actually can be met. Yeah, and then that frees you up from focusing on yourself and focusing on others around you. Whereas mm-hmm. when you focus on all everything you want, because there's always going to be something more, more you want. Yeah. You can't focus on your. You can't focus on anyone else because you just keep focusing, focusing on, on yourself yes. when you think what you want is what you need. Yeah. So. And if there's ever a reward for uh, the person who said focus, <laughs> the most times in a sentence, we both me? would be getting uh-huh. it. I think we've said that word so many times in this podcast. But I don't know. My heart behind sharing all this is just to be open and vulnerable and say like, this is where I am at. This is why I feel like God is stirring up inside of me. Um, helping me see that like what I thought I needed and what I thought I wanted isn't necessarily true and kind of shifting my focus. Less is enough. We don't need all of this junk that we have in our house and that we think we want. Um, And I think he's starting to prod and say, okay, so if you're not focused on that, like, what are you going to be focused on? Like, how Mm -hmm. are you going to use those resources that you would be spending on stuff? And I think his delight and his desire would be to see it used for the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm excited to see what he shows us with that. I don't know what it's supposed to look like yet. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But uh probably looks a little like Jesus. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes. Anywho, <laughs> do you have any final thoughts for today? Nope. That's all. Okay. Well, thank you guys for hanging in there with us. We hope that we just made sense. Yeah. I'll be honest and say I didn't fully know where I was going sometimes when I was saying my sentences, but that's how I operate. <laughs> I am an external processor. So I have something I feel like I want to share and it comes out of me. And then usually Ryan wraps it up with the bow, which I think you did a few times. So hopefully. So thanks. Um, and if you're not already, make sure you're following us at by grace, we live pod on Instagram and hit the subscribe button wherever you're listening to your podcasts. I know I've shared this before, but we would be so, so thankful if you took the chance took the chance why do i keep saying that took the time i said it last week too took the time Hmm. to 
rate and review. I know on Apple is the only place that you can actually leave a review other than just like a five star rating. Um, you see how I said five star rating. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but if you are listening on Apple Podcasts, I mean, seriously, that would mean the world to us. It just helps us get the word out and allows other people to come across our podcasts. So we would be so grateful. And with that, we're done, and we'll see you next week. Bye.